Welcome to possibly the first of many mini reviews to come. I decided to do this based on my previous livestream of Freedom Planet, where I did something I have never done before on my channel. I had rage quit and I gave up on the game. Blimey, what an enthusiastic opening for a review, I hear you cry. Well, I had my excuses at the ready, but I still felt bad about dropping out of the playthrough. I needed to make it up to everyone somehow, but after what I went through, I wasn't prepared to play it again. Well, not right now anyway, maybe in the future. So I decided to make a quick review and express my findings on this title. This does mean I haven't completed this experience, so when I say this is a mini retrospective, I actually mean it. But have no fear, my main reviews of Sonic hacks and mods won't come to a stop, so the S Factor will be making an appearance soon. And just because I got angry at this adventurous platformer that forced me to bail, it doesn't mean I'm going to be bashing it to death with a club. I have a lot of praise for it too. Let's get started. Right off the bat is the prologue, and I was quite shocked to as what I was seeing. I was half expecting the kids tell, and that we must defeat the bad guys with the power of love, or something. When in fact it contained a great amount of action right from the get go, with a lot of pretty dark tone at times, which may scare some younger viewers. However, it's not all gruesome, as the game has its light hearted moments, a few jokes inserted here and there, and it was still displaying the meaning of friendship and teamwork between the main characters. My initial thoughts were also debunked with it being simplistic, as in fact it can be a little long winded. From what I gathered, an evil guy called Brevron crash landed onto the planet and he needs this precious relic slash stone to power up his ship and carry on with his intended journey. Instead of asking for help like a good boy, he abruptly kills the king and hypnotises his son to do his evil bidding, effectively taking over the kingdom. He also causes a lot of commotion and conflict amongst the other two kingdoms, lots of banter goes on midway, and it's basically up to these creatures, Lilac, Carol and Mila, to go and save the day. The pre-title demonstration does well to set the prospect, with the rest of the game containing a lot of cutscenes in between levels and events to narrate the fiction further. The voice acting is great and the animations are beautiful. I can't exactly call this lip syncing as their mouths just move up and down, but they open their traps at the right time and most games wouldn't even bother with this minor addition, so for me, this is good enough. My only beef with the cutscenes is that they can drag for so long that I started not to care what was going on anymore and I decided to skip them. The story is luckily optional however, as before you initiate the game, you have a choice of game modes. Adventure mode contains the full gameplay with all the plot to go with it, and classic is almost identical except it removes all the cutscenes and storytelling, so once you finish a level, you progress on to the next stage immediately. When you begin your journey, you get to pick between two characters, Lilac or Carol, with Mila to unlock later on. My viewers chose Lilac as the protagonist and she handles very well. Good acceleration and speed, nice hang time. She typically mimics Sonic in the classics, but with a little more momentum and fluidity and no automatic spin attack or rolling into a ball. Instead you have an attack button and a special button. The attack control does a distinctive punch and kicks on or off the ground and you can similarly use the attack command while airborne to perform a slightly heavier attack. Whereas the special button makes Lilac perform a spinning lightning ball and then blasts off which can be used to plough through enemies or damaging bosses greatly. The special move doesn't necessarily have to be used offensively as I found it beneficial to reach higher ledges. Lilac can zoom into 6 different directions with this ability, left, right, all the diagonals, but for some bizarre reason, not directly up and this frustrated me quite a bit, but it's nothing I'm going to lose sleep over. She can't directly dive south neither, but I never found myself trying to perform that manoeuvre so, eh, who cares. The special can only be used when this bar in the top left corner is full, and then it drains completely once used. Luckily, this power bar regenerates rather quickly, so you're not going to be hanging around for too long until you can use your greater skill again. There is one problem though, which I'll get onto in just a second. Lilac can double jump which she calls the Cyclone, but it's more than just an extra lift, it also helps you glide in the air for a second or two, and also swipes the baddies away, so it's a very valuable technique. Anyway, this is where the problem with the power bar comes in as using the Cyclone taxes a small chunk of your energy, 
meaning if you want to use your special power, you have to be careful not to be crazy with your controller beforehand. Exploring the stages with Lilac was quite comforting to begin with. For the first half, it was your typical Sonic game with loops and curves and even springs, and they were easy to follow even with the multiple routes. The enemies and other hazards were placed in the right spots with plenty of helpful platforms and lifts available to get around them. When digging deeper into the game however, the sense of knowing where to go starts to deteriorate, and a few puzzles get thrown into the mix such as key findings. It's not too much of a problem, however there was one thing that I did dislike is that you were forced to start backtracking in later levels, especially when it's not too obvious to actually do that. A fair amount of times I started looping and I was getting irritated that I couldn't find a way out, until I had to go back quite a bit and use a new opened up route. Of course later levels are going to increase in difficulty as you progress, so it's just a matter of opinion on how you feel about puzzle elements being introduced, and except for a few places suddenly getting really crowded, so much that even the game itself was struggling to display everything at 60 frames per second, I had no issues with the level maps and I greatly enjoyed them. The art for the most part is exquisite, the character designs are clear and detailed and are sized or scaled appropriately with plenty of animation fluidity to go with. Even little thoughts were added like swinging onto the ladder rather than just snapping onto it like most generic games do. Most obstacles and enemies stand out well and the level art is gorgeous. I can't be sincerer, some of the artwork I could just stare at all day, but I don't have any footage of that because I didn't think my viewers would have appreciated it. I didn't really have any problems with how the level graphics were showcased, except for maybe the odd level or two when I couldn't tell if it was a wall or a ceiling, but that's more of a shading clash than anything. Seriously, no concerns from me on how this game is presented. Top notch. As for the music, all the tunes fit in nicely with their representing recipients, full of high beats and energy, albeit containing emotions to the tracks. The clarity on these songs are crystal clear too, and most melodies are all scarce of repetitiveness. The official soundtrack is available to buy from Bandcamp for about $10, which is about £7.50 for Espress at the time of reviewing, and I will leave a link to that page in the video description. Nevertheless, even though some of those songs were catchy, I wouldn't call them memorable. After putting the game down, I didn't have a single jingle replaying in my head, and admittedly, I had to listen to the soundtrack again. It was only then I was able to select a few favourites. probably been thinking that this is a fair review so far, or not, I don't know how your mind works, and you may be asking yourself, what made this guy give up halfway through the game then? Well the answer to that ladies and gentlemen would be the bosses. Calm down, put your pitchforks away and let me explain, these bosses aren't your typical everyday Sonic bosses, these are fully grown mechanical beasts with a lot of firepower who likes to overshadow little lilac. At first I was really enjoying how they were executed, they're there to send a shudder down your spine, but to build up your encouragement to bravely take down these monsters. And they're not so tough once you learn their patterns, and you get a great sense of accomplishment once you get that slow cinematic explosion. Although it didn't take too long for these bosses to start showing off their ego, and I felt that their difficulty increased a little too rapidly. They were soaring all over the place like a hyperactive kid and just firing lasers and projectiles left, right, centre, not giving you a lot of time to react. In most periods, their hitboxes are out of reach, so you have to jump or cyclone your way to get there and attack. And because you're taking a tad of energy from your special bar to reach them, you can't always use your superior ability. Before I started my livestream, I picked a normal difficulty option. If I was to pick easy, the game would have been a breeze and unentertaining to watch. And if I was to pick hard, well, I wouldn't have got very far and all my viewers would have got bored a lot earlier on. Normal is the most logical choice, but no way are these bosses classed as normal. Yes, you have to pick up their pattern, but even then they're still high on E numbers and unpredictable on where they're off to next. I just want to make it clear right now, if I was sat on the sofa in front of my TV in my own comfort playing the game, 
I probably would have done a ton better and I would have destroyed these bosses more prematurely. In fact, on this boss, I actually tuned out on my audience and my commentary came to a practical halt and I just fully concentrated. I still died once or twice, but I did eventually defeat that boss using this tactic. OH MY I ACTUALLY DID IT! NO! NO! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Maybe it was my fault for choosing a normal difficulty option. Maybe I was a liability for going into the game blindly. Perhaps I should have taken my own time alone first without any pressure. Who knows? What matters is the answer to this question. Can I recommend this game? Yes. Yes I can. The struggle on the bosses is the biggest letdown for me, but I have to be professional about this. Undeniably, the creators have really put their heart and soul into this title, and it goes to show. The music is good, the art is fantastic, the general gameplay is a pleasure for most parts, and the story is pretty interesting. If only those cutscenes would get to the point quicker. This game is just a little over a tenner on Steam, and it's also available on other platforms. So if you ever want to try something new, give this a go. Thank you so much for watching this mini review of Freedom Planet and I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank Frank Cable for buying this game for me in the first place and also to my sponsors for making this video possible. Make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe if you want to see more mini reviews in the future. But for now, I'll catch you another time. Have a great day.